Tranquility du Jour, April 10th, 2019. Restore and reflect while nurturing your creative spirit at a gorgeous secluded villa nestled on an Italian hilltop. Indulge in daily yoga, Tuscan cuisine, a Puccini opera, and the magic of Cinque Terre. Join me this July for Tranquility in Tuscany. Learn more at KimberlyWilson.com slash Italy. Hello there, this is Kimberly Wilson and welcome to the 450th edition of Tranquility Du Jour, a podcast discussing and featuring artists, activists, and authors making a difference around the globe. Today, I'm going to be musing on life lately. Also, the never-ending search for balance, which I'm sure many of you can relate to, and what's changed since episode 400, which was our last milestone. Now, before I dive in, I want to just mention a few things that are upcoming. First of all, if you're new to Tranquility Du Jour, you can learn more in the show notes, KimberlyWilson.com slash 450. Also, if you're not getting our bi-weekly, weekly to every other week, really love notes, you can sign up for those also in the show notes or go to KimberlyWilson.com slash love notes. Also gives you access to Tranquil Treasures where you'll find all sorts of MP3s, PDFs, and more to help you find a bit more tranquility in the busyness of life. Now, if you're local and or willing to come on in to D.C., we have Pigs, Pugs, and Pinot happening on April 28th at a wine bar here in D.C. We're going to have Charlotte, the potbelly pig there. We're going to have lots of pugs, and we're going to have lots of fun. So if you are free, please come on out. It's $25, and all the proceeds support Pigs and Pugs Project. Also, June 8th is Burley Manor Animal Sanctuary Yoga and the Animals, and that's in Ellicott City right outside of DC. And then June 9th, I can't believe it's less than two months away is our TDJ soiree. Now for this, half the tickets have sold out. So if you are interested in joining us, please grab yours now. There's general admission tickets and there's VIP. And you can find out more about these over at KimberlyWilson.com slash soiree. Also, Tuscany. If you're interested in escaping to Tuscany, that's happening in July. Four spots left for that. And then the last thing I have scheduled for this year is returning to Montreal to teach at Luna Yoga in their advanced teacher training. I'll be chatting creativity, mindfulness, and business. That's September 21st and 22nd, and there are links to that in the show notes. All right, so let's start with chatting about life lately. Okay, so like, what is going on at TDJ World Headquarters, which is actually my tiny pink palace in Washington, D.C., that I share with a partner, four pets, and it's 600 square feet. So itty bitty. And yet, honestly, it's everything I could possibly want. It's funny, recently I thought maybe I should look for a two bedroom simply so that the dogs have more space because we're having issues with our two male dogs. One that we think has a little bit of sundowners or dementia and he gets a little riled up at night and then wants to attack the other one. And then of course the senior one that's doing the attacking is disabled and has one eye and you know really should not be attacking the healthy younger one that we think may actually be a quarter pit. So I was like, well, maybe I just need more space to help them so they don't feel so cramped. But anyway, as I was looking at two bedrooms in the D.C. area, A, super duper pricey, but B, I was not finding the outdoor space that we have, which is luxurious if you think about snow and having to let the dogs out at 3 a.m. because they've decided they need to go to the bathroom at that time. Can you imagine being in an apartment building and having to walk downstairs, go outside, you know, and put on clothes? and everything versus like here, I just open up the door. You know, so it's little things like that, that I have been here since 04. So I kind of take it for granted. And I was like, oh, I cannot. That is something I cannot let go of. 
especially because I've got these three big sliding glass doors that open up into the patio and it gives so much light. And I've got daffodils that are blooming because I planted the bulbs last fall. And then soon I'll be picking up impatiens and putting them in all the pots. I probably have like 25 pots out there. And you know, there's just something very sweet about outdoor patio space. So, you know, that is something that has been kind of on my mind with regard to life lately is kind of the living situation and the space. But I tell you, I don't know if I can ever give up the Pink Palace. So we will see. But in addition to that, what I wanted to mention also is it's with Year of Tranquility, which is my book that came out in January. We are now into creativity. If you started in January, that is. Now you may be in any other topic and that's absolutely fine if you have this book. But I wanted to mention one thing, which is week one, which would have been last week, was all about artist dates. And this week is about art journaling. And one thing that really stuck me with the artist dates is, you know, I always have the intention of, of getting an artist date in, but I don't write it down. And so last week I put in artist date, one hour working at a cafe and doing some writing. And so, you know, it's just little things like that of actually write it down, make it happen, which is a great book, by the way. And so I wanted to mention that to you all in case you two are like, oh, I want to have more of this in my life, but I'm not doing it. Are you writing it down and making it an appointment? Something that you really don't want to break with yourself. You could even ask yourself, I like to do this, right? So for my mentoring and therapy, I have a 24 hour cancellation policy. And so what if we had a 24 hour cancellation policy with ourselves where it's like, okay, even with emergencies, we cannot cancel. And if we do, then we need to pay. So what would be your payment if you don't make your artist date? And maybe it could be simply as like, okay, I put, you know, $50 into a jar, and then that is going to ultimately go to charity at the end of the year, or something along those lines. But you know, there's a penalty of sorts versus, oh, well, I didn't get to it. And so that's one of the things that I think is so important about, you know, using a book like Year of Tranquility, a lifestyle planner to actually make these things a reality. But honestly, you can do this with just a sheet of paper and pen. So ask yourself, what is an artist date that I can take this week or within the next few days or next week to really nourish my creative spark? Now, let me give you some examples based on what I wrote in Year of Tranquility. Visit a farmer's market, go to your local library, create a kitchen herb garden, write in your journal at a sidewalk cafe, visit a craft shop, pick up something new to play with like washi tape, stamps, paper, pens, collage, set up your creative space at home, visit a museum, head to the countryside, play on Pinterest, watch a foreign film, etc., etc. All right, so I wanted to just do a brief reminder about making sure that creativity is infused into your everyday in some way. Now, of course, we can't go to a sidewalk cafe every day, or most of us can't. Or you can't go see a foreign film every day. So, but is there something that you can do once a week that is going to nourish your creative spark? And then also every day, think about what would my creative side or self most want to express here? And it could be as simple as tying a pink scarf around your neck or as simple as trying a new beverage, right? So it doesn't have to be something profound. It's just the idea of getting out of that darn comfort zone a little bit, right? Now, the next thing I wanted to mention on with life lately is the day book. All right, so I have worked with my graphic designer, who is amazing, by the way, and we're going to try to tie a bow around this by the end of April, because I tell you, similar to Year of Tranquility and everything else I've put out, I can edit until the cows come home. So a few fun things that I am adding to the day book that I'm really actually I'm excited about because I feel that they add a little more a learning, right? So how to's, but also encouragement to make these 
extra activities part of everyday life. So for example, I have a piece on journaling, how to do it and why. I have a piece on yoga, how to do it, sun salutations, and why. I have a piece on meditation, how to do it and why. And then I also have artist dates talking about what are they and why are they important. Now, some of this stuff, I'm like, how did I not think of this before in my former day books? And if there is something where you're like, I can't believe this isn't in your day book, then let me know because I still have time to add things. One other piece I'm adding is a habit tracker, and that'll be with each monthly layout too. So really excited about this. And again, if you have suggestions or input, do not hesitate to pass them along because This would be Daybook 7.0 craziness. And, you know, every different edition that I released, I made shifts always based on your feedback, always. And so I, of course, welcome it. And I'll also be doing sneak peeks as we get a little closer, just to give you guys some ideas of what to expect. And then you can, of course, let me know if you would like tweaks. Now, the thing about this one is my idea with it, since it is dateless, is it's going to be evergreen because I am going to do on-demand printing through Amazon versus, you know, what I've done in the past is worked with a a great small business printer, and yet it's so much more expensive, unfortunately. And, you know, I'd have to have a ton of inventory here in my house and do all the shipping, which is just so much time and energy that I, I just was like, I need to be more efficient with this. So that's why I'm using Amazon. Their printing quality is beautiful, top notch, and It allows it to be evergreen, meaning I don't sell out, you know, with all the additions in the past, I sold out and there were no more. And so that's the thought kind of with a new day book. And those of you who are like, but I want it spiral. I want to be able to lay it flat. I hear you. The great thing is you can take any perfect bound book to a Kinko's or a printer. And what they do is they chop off the binding and add spirals. You know, a lot of people did this in our teacher training programs throughout the years. You know, they take a book that they were just using so much and they wanted to be able to use maybe a little bit more workbooky and do this. So know that it's a great option actually for any of the books that you have if you're like, I like Spiral. Because unfortunately, at least as of right now, Amazon doesn't offer that. It's just the perfect bound. Also, one thing I'm super duper excited about is the TDJ Soiree that is happening Sunday, June 9th in Washington, D.C. So As I've mentioned in various settings, this is going to be probably one of the most exciting events I feel like that I have ever put on. And what I mean by that is I think back to, I believe it was the year 2000, so, you know, just 19 years ago, and I held my first day long and it was called the Wild Woman Workshop. And I tell you, I put so much into that event, you would have thought I was like planning a wedding. And it really, it was at a setting actually where people do have weddings, similar to where we're going to be in June. Anyway, (laughs) the funny thing is though, is I really didn't know much about healthy food at that time. And I remember for treats and stuff, I had little Debbie oatmeal cream pies and stuff like that. And I remember someone was like, yeah, I loved it. Next time we'd really like some healthier snack alternatives. And I was like, what are they talking about healthier? I mean, these are oatmeal cream pies until I grew up in Oklahoma. (laughs) To me, that was healthy. And so I have learned over the past 19 years that that is not actually healthy. And um, an offer, as you will see at this June 9th event, like really yummy, high end, beautiful experience of some gorgeous, artsy, tasty, Uh, vegan food at a restaurant that was recently named the number six top vegan friendly restaurant in the world. Okay, no big deal, but in the freaking world. Also, there's going to be six hours of programming. There's going to be a trunk show, like a little tranquility pop-up, a mini fashion show, a live podcast with me and Tim, 
um, you know, all sorts of like fun additional sensory surprises. There's going to be a self-care station, a creativity station, a step and repeat area to get your photo in front of a pigs and pugs project, kind of big banner. And, you know, the idea behind this, A, fundraiser for pigs and pugs project, also a way for us to come together as a community. And this really stemmed out of me talking about this on the podcast of wanting to do maybe like a weekend retreat, but it's DC and urban. And then, you know, I looked at it and the more I explored it, I thought, well, what about just a one day that would allow people coming in to not have to necessarily get a hotel room if they wanted to come in Sunday morning and then leave Sunday night. So anyway, it evolved from a weekend into a day. And I'm really super duper excited about this. You can find more about this at KimberlyWilson.com slash soiree. Now, couple other things that are coming up, of course, is the Italy retreat, and that'll be my second time to return to Italy. Now, I won't be returning to Italy for at least a couple of years, so if you're interested in Italy, now is your time. And someone recently told me that they had read that Luca was like the one of the most beloved cities or towns, I guess it's a town, in Italy. And Luca is the 15-minute drive. It's the biggest town outside of the villa where we'll be staying. So I thought that was exciting. I'll have to look for that article and share it with you all. But this place is absolutely beautiful. So if you're looking for kind of a, a dreamy escape in July that has yoga, creativity, and mindfulness curriculum, plus a day trip to Cinque Terre. You know, this is a great, great experience because again, probably the soonest I would go back is in 2021 because I haven't been there since 15. So how many years? It's been four years actually since I have led a retreat there. So I don't know when I'll be back. It's stunning, but yet I am trying to not be as scheduled as I have been in the past. So if you're interested, now is your opportunity. Now, one other thing that is going on in our lives, and it's actually happening right now as we speak, is donating Miss Lily, the beautiful vintage camper that we used for our 2013 Tranquility Tour. And what is so cool is we're donating her to an organization that Tim grew up with called Lollipop Farms. And Lollipop is an animal sanctuary outside of Rochester, New York, where he's from. And as I was Googling on donating your vehicle to charity and things along those lines, we've really had a hard time with RVs because a lot of places just don't want to deal with the towing of an RV. So anyway, we're in the process of dealing with that as I speak. So hopefully by the time this releases and airs, Miss Lily will be at an auction ready to be sold to a brand new, hopefully amazing owner because she's so amazing. And then the proceeds will benefit Lollipop, which is really, I'm so excited about, although it is a bit bittersweet. It's sad to see her go. Another thing, as we talk about life lately, Mr. Louie. So there's a tree in our back alley that has beautiful pink blooms. And I always think of it this time of the year because this is when we lost Louie, which was 2015, four years ago, April 16th. And so right around now, the tree is in beautiful full bloom. And it really only lasts like for a week or two weeks out of the year. So most of the time, I don't even notice this tree. But right now, it's in full bloom. And I think about the you know, last hours with Louie and we stood in front of that tree and and took a photo with him. And it's crazy because even it's four years later and I still, you know, struggle with even talking about it. And and those of you who are new to Tranquility du Jour, Louie was like my pug, my love of my life. And I don't say that lightly. And um, I lost him to cancer, really horrible, aggressive cancer in April, clearly, of 2015. And so, you know, I I just share this with you all because if you have anniversaries coming up of loss or, you know, are experiencing loss in your life right now or really aren't very familiar with loss, I'm just here to tell you that it is an ongoing process and experience and to be as gentle as possible with yourself. I have already 
blocked out a lot of next Tuesday. You know, what we like to do is sprinkle some of his ashes, just have like a moment. And so we'll definitely be doing that. But there's something that I have found to be really helpful about honoring and acknowledging. And um, for anyone dealing with loss, I just want to encourage that. And also, you know, to remind you that the heaviness I I always kind of felt like it's this uh, feeling of being encased in concrete, that the heaviness, all of this is part of the journey and the process of grief. And what's wild is four freaking years later, I still cannot really talk about Louie. It's like so painful. And you would think with time, right? When we get better, I've done a module on pet loss and grief for my veterinary social work program. And yet I still like, oh my gosh, so struggle. So anyway, one year anniversary next week, can't believe it. And then that, that tree in the alley that is so gorgeous is just the regular reminder. Another thing that's on my mind is the updating and enhancing of Tranquility Du Jour. So hopefully over the next few months, you're going to see some of this unfolding and and transpiring. Really, it's something I wrote about, I think even in November, after I had gotten back from a solo jaunt to Paris, and it was around Thanksgiving weekend. And I, you know, I just mentioned this idea of doing a little bit of updating, upgrading, something like clarifying, you know, around Tranquility Du Jour. Like, what is it? Because You know, I mean, I know what it is. We all know what it is who have been listening and whatnot for a while. But how do we really put it into a concise kind of statement or experience? So that led me to write the Tranquility Du Jour tenants, right, which are five tenants that kind of make up what Tranquility Du Jour is about. So number one, compassion, two, creativity, three, style and beauty, four, mindfulness and five, self-care. So I'm curious for you, what would you say are your top five tenets? What are the things that really you feel like this is what I am about? And there is something that was very helpful about, you know, trying to take all these different topics that we cover and explore in Tranquility Du Jour and have, you know, since my goodness, 2004, when I started writing the blog, and you know, through podcasts, retreats, workshops, salons, e-courses, etc., and try to funnel it down into like five things. Now, I think these are fluid, that they'll be evolving. But this is kind of where I am right now. And, you know, my piece too about this that I wanted to share, and this ties into a blog post I wrote, or actually it was the love note that that went out on Saturday, is this idea of, you know, small steps, making these small shifts actually, changes. Because if we think about if these are the tenets of Tranquility Du Jour, or, you know, whatever your tenets are, your values of sorts, if you're like, oh my gosh, I so value creativity, it's so important to me, and yet there's no creativity in daily life, it can be a really helpful time to do some reflection on, okay, how do I get that in there? You know, for me, one of the things was, oh my gosh, like reading is so important to me. Like I am obsessed with books. And yet I was finding that I'm not finishing books because I pick up this book and I read a little and then this book and then this book and then I've got my Kindle. And so, you know, actually setting aside time to make sure I'm reading, sorry, Gizzy is snoring away, Um, to make sure I'm reading is critical. Otherwise, am I living my values? So asking yourself maybe what yours might be, particularly as we're in this brand new, exciting season of spring, at least those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. And you know what's so lovely is the birds are singing, the 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 bulbs are coming up, the daffodils, the tulips, the hyacinths. And you know, there's just like a skip in people's step. And there's something about that that is this great reminder of like, okay, how do I, how can I kind of refresh myself, my life, my um, ways of doing things? Is there anything that isn't quite working that could use a little shift? And again, I'm just going to circle back to, all right, once we sort that out, let's get that in our planner and make it part of our regular lives. And you know, it can be as simple as like a little treat at the local coffee shop, right? Where you pick up, I'm recently, well, not super recently, but 
in the past few years, quite obsessed with matcha lattes. And, you know, you read that matcha is like super duper good for you. And frankly, it just tastes really good. And so, you know, to me, that's a little dose of like self care, a little dose of um, uh, nourishment, right? For you, it might be and like a vegan cupcake, or it might be some dark chocolate, or it might be a green juice. We've been back to juicing again. We had been out of juicing and, may- and mainly just doing smoothies because they're so much easier. But now back to doing some juicing and it just, you know, it feels good. So what are some ways that might be helpful for you two to think about, okay, how can I live these values? All right, balance. I'm going to transition from life lately to balance and the never ending search for balance. And I do feel like this ties in a little bit with the love note that went out on Saturday talking about small shifts. And also what I just mentioned about, you know, making sure we get into our schedule, the things that are most important to us, and also to look at our schedules and be like, okay, is what is happening right now important to me? And in alignment with my values, or does it feel like I am just constantly giving and doing what other people want me to be doing? Now, I know we can go through shifts, right, where it's kind of impossible to make those sorts of changes. Maybe we're in a caregiver mode, or it may feel impossible. Maybe we're in a caregiver mode, or we're in a mode where it's super duper busy at work, run really tight deadlines, and we know all of this is somewhat temporary. However, you know, seeing if there is a way, even when we know that this is a temporary challenge or struggle, is there still possibly a way that we can make sure we're getting a little bit of us time in? You know, so for example, the past few weeks have been like oddly really kind of consumed for me with, uh, you know, a four day conference, four days in Colorado, which was lovely, but you know, travel, right? It just kind of knocks your system off. And lots of morning appointments from dentists to dermatologists to consultants, right? So all these sorts of things that take up the little bits of free time that I might have in the morning. And so Again, all this stuff really great or even more kind of trainings and workshops like Sunday. I was in an all day ethics training the week before that, you know, a half day uh, working with people in their 20s and 30s training. And then, of course, before that, the four day conference. And then this upcoming Saturday, I have a three hour training on anxiety. I mean, I love this stuff, right? And yet, you know, it does cut into what is your quote unquote free space. So when I recognize this, what I did So I was like, okay, no more scheduling on these days. And I went in and I just blocked it out. So this is my time to do podcasting, to do blogging, to kind of organize my day, to uh, carve out time and space for myself. And so, you know, even just to soak in the tub versus like waking up, being like, oh my gosh, I have to get to my 9 a.m. workshop or my 9 a.m. conference or what have you. So that has been really helpful for me. Granted, we're just a few days in, but I have found like I feel lighter because when you don't have those little pockets of space, and I've lived my life so much like that with the yoga studio for so many years, where it was just appointment after appointment after class after class, you know, it's just like it, um, it really, really takes a toll. I know that there would be times I was in a yoga class and I'd be like, okay, in 10 hours, I get to go home and I'm done. You know, and you're just like 10 hours and the day's like halfway done. You know, it's just not a way to, it's not a way that I want to live anymore. And so by making sure I carve it out in my planner, then I am way more likely to make it happen. Otherwise I'm like, oh, blank space. Yes, of course I can meet at this time or yes, absolutely. Let's make an appointment here. Okay. So balance. I got this question again that I thought was so insightful and helpful and I can totally relate. She said, how do you keep from getting consumed with one thing and remember to stop working on it when the time you've scheduled for it is up so you can go on to the next thing? I guess my topics would be time management skills, discipline, and how you make it all work without everything becoming a last minute emergency and losing one's mind. I love this, Julie. And I think this is such a great question and an important reminder as we think about 
time management, which, oh my gosh, just it kind of even saying those two words, it just feels like oh, heavy and yucky and gross. And yet it can also be ideally like light and pink and flowery and fun if we are able to do it in a way that works best with our biorhythms. You know, so for example, for me, I find that I'm fresher in the morning. I used to be a night owl, but now I'm much fresher in the morning. And so mornings, I'm trying to make as my time that's carved out for my more creative work or even my organizational work. And so, you know, for you thinking about, okay, when am I most ripe for doing this type of work. You know, for example, gardening. It's like say you're doing gardening in your backyard or, you know, what have you, like you're going to have a time and a place where you're feeling more into that, right? When you're just more able to kind of dive into that and get your hands dirty. And I feel like it's the same thing with our projects, our work projects, you know, so thinking about, okay, when am I freshest for this type of work? And can I set aside a set time? You know, what's so interesting, and I hear this a lot from people, is whenever I'm just like, okay, I'm going to give myself 30 minutes to check email, that's it. And then I'll circle back, you know, later in the day. Or I'm going to give myself 30 minutes to work on this project, and then I'm going to move on. There's, it, It's amazing what we can accomplish versus when we're like, oh, I've got the whole day to work on this project. And I know that isn't always the case and for everyone, but I do find that kind of setting aside these blocks – Okay, like, so for me, all right, this is my time to work on tranquility, my clothing line. I'm going to work on the spring lookbook, which by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is coming out this week. Um, Again, have been editing this thing for (laughs) over a month, but I think it's really cute. My graphic designer thinks it's our best one yet. So anyway, I hope you guys will love it. But, you know, so there's my time for the tranquility hat. There's the working with clients therapy hat or mentoring hat. There's the blogging hat, the podcasting hat. There's the, you know, time with family hat, the time with friends hat, the organizing our home, you know, hat. So we wear all these different hats. And I have found over the years that having a bunch of them in a row It's just too much. So is there a way to kind of chunk it? You know, so for example, even last Thursday morning, I met with a consultant and, you know, she's someone who is a a longtime experienced therapist who is, you know, kind of serving as a mentor of sorts. Well, I realized, so I was going to her, then to ballet, then to clients. And I was like, it just doesn't feel great. I'd rather have my therapy minded hat on and then go into therapy, working with clients versus, okay, let me stop for ballet and then come back. Now, let me just say that is not the end of the world and it's working, it's doable. But if I could kind of block out more, you know, um, like move her to a day where I don't have ballet, say Tuesday or Wednesday, then it would be great because my focus is just in that particular hat or mindset for a number of hours. Now, don't get me wrong, breaking life up with chunks of exercise. Oh my gosh, so, so helpful. But yet I do find, you know, it's like I go um, kind of further downtown in order to work with her. Then I commute up, you know, pretty much pretty far uptown for ballet. And then I come back to the DuPont area for clients. And it just, it's again, not the end of the world, but I don't think it's as efficient, particularly for my mindset, because it is nice to just like wear a hat for a little while, right? In chunks. I don't know if that's helpful. I hope it is, Julie. And, you know, this is one of the things that I feel like I, we could go on and on about, and I have interviewed so many great experts on my podcast about this, but I really do feel like we have to find a system that works for us. I'm very big into you know, writing everything down at the beginning of the week, Sunday, I always kind of chunk out my week, I look at it, I see what I can do to be as efficient as possible. For example, uh, Thursday, ballet. I added in there to also go to the bank and the grocery store before, beforehand because there happens to be one right by my ballet class. Okay. So little things like that just make life more efficient versus like, oh, let me go to the grocery store now. Oh, oh, okay. I need to get to the bank. It's like, oh, can I just wait a few days and then get it all done in one swoop? 
And oftentimes, too, if I'm like, oh, here's an errand or something along those lines, I'm like, "Mm, do I really need to do it now? What's funny is even Saturday night, Tim and I, we went out to dinner. We had tacos and went out for tacos and then a latte with uh, one of the pups, Mookie, because he's the anxious one that can't be left home alone. And then we got back and Tim was like, oh, do you want to watch a movie? And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. But let me spend a few hours organizing. I organized all Saturday night. And then I also organized on a Sunday night. And there's something about that that just feels good to kind of get like, we've got these cabinets where I have a lot of tranquility and tranquility du jour supplies, like getting that organized, clearing off my desk so it's nice and spacious, you know, all these sorts of things just really, they make a difference. And so if there is a way to look at your life, look at your days and see like, okay, how can I chunk things? How can I set myself up for success for the week ahead? How can I look at my day and just see, does it match my energy? Mm, I'm not really feeling very high energy today. And I'd put on here a project that was pretty high energy. Okay, well, can I move it to another day? So it's like paying attention to bio rhythms, paying attention to priorities and deadlines. And then also asking yourself, do I want to do this? Is there anything I can let go of? Again, Julie, I hope this is helpful because this is, I know it's a challenge, particularly if we feel super duper overscheduled. And so again, is there anything that could be cut out or delegated? Okay, so one other question I got is I'm working on reviewing my life's goals, assessing my life's goals. And boy, it's not an easy task, (laughs) she says, Jocelyn. And um, I've jumped into. So any help would be appreciated. Jocelyn, I think this is such a great question. And honestly, it probably calls for a podcast all on its own, just like Julie's question. I um, I have found with life goals, what I like to do is kind of six month and uh, one year chunks. So for example, my birthday is June 30th. So I love to at that time, review the past year, what's happened since June 30th, the year before, and then look ahead, what do I want to experience and have happen and see and do by June 30th, the following year. So it happens to be really nice for me because I'm mid-year. But, you know, for others, I think it's just looking at your your life and thinking, okay, what do I want out of it? Do I want to be planting a garden? Do I want to write a book? Do I want to have more time with family? You know, whatever it is. And then kind of writing it out and then doing what I like to call micro movements, which is a concept that I picked up from Sark over the years. And she's got a book called Make Your Creative Dreams Real. And she talks about micro movements, right? So it's these small steps and thinking about, okay, if I want to write a book, all right, well, I have to get clear on what the topic is. I have to stop or start writing. You know, it's things along those lines. So it can be hard to really get clear, I think, on what one's goals are. And then from there to kind of funnel it down, like, okay, what are some steps I can take now to actually make it happen and bring it to reality? You know, I do talk about this a bit in the very first chapter of Year of Tranquility, where I encourage kind of looking at, okay, what is it I want to bring forth? How can I have a sense of accountability? You know, can I write a letter to myself that I'm going to open a year from now that's like, I'm so glad you've done X. You know, there's this wonderful affirmative writing exercise that I got from John Evans, which he does a lot on writing as a tool for healing, writing as therapy. And it's basically you write a letter to yourself, say in, you know, six months, one year out, kind of like the letter to future self I just mentioned. And and you describe your day like I am sitting at my cleared off desk, looking out on my um, you know, garden that's flush with flowers and, and greenery. I have a snore a healthy snoring pug on my lap. I have a belly filled with green juice, you know, where you just kind of really get into it. You write it out super descriptive. And this can be a very helpful exercise for people. So that might be a fun place to start too, because honestly, I think for many people, it's hard to even get clear on the goals. And then from there, you know, breaking it down into the micro steps. I hope that's helpful. And of course, I'm happy to muse on this more because this and life balance um, is an ongoing topic that I think we can all benefit from. 
Now, the last comment or question that I got was how to not be drawn into the fretful energy of friends talking about restrictive food rules. And it's a little tricky for me because I do have somewhat restrictive uh, food rules, you know, and the fact that I um, do not eat meats and, you know, um, things along those lines. And so I don't know really the answer to that because I don't find it fretful. I mean, I've got, you know, friends who are gluten free or trying to, you know, stop dairy or stop eating chicken or, you know, or just like counting their calories. And to me, I don't really have a problem with that when I'm eating out with them or what have you, I guess, because I too, you know, can be quite challenging at times if they're, you know, say going to a steakhouse or whatever, you know, I'd probably get a house salad. So, you know, I, I think the thing to maybe ask yourself with this is like, what is it about their kind of comments that's rubbing you the wrong way? And is there a way to reframe that at all? Um, because sometimes it's not so much about even though what, you know, other people do does trigger and bother us, but it's really our reaction to it that gets us kind of upset. And so what is it that might be upsetting you about their restrictive food rules? Like, for example, whenever I have friends that and, and I go through a phase like this too, whenever I, you know, I'm like, oh no, I'm trying not to have as much sugar, right? And we don't get dessert. I'm like so annoyed whenever the friend who's like not wanting the sugar and I am. And so I get it, you know, it can just be like, oh, you know, um, feeling like, oh, really, I wish I had her discipline. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's one of those things that it's personal and, you know, it's important to maybe ask to, to understand like, oh, what is it about gluten-free that feels better for you? Or what is it about paleo that you're finding? Or how do you like Whole30? Or what do you think about being vegan? Or how is it being vegetarian? You know, it's like we can just kind of get curious about it and, you know, see if there's anything we can learn from it and maybe even incorporate into our own but without it feeling like restrictive, because I think that's a really important word that you use that is worth kind of looking at, because ideally, you know, we can um, still have tons and tons of options no matter what our food rules are. Like I had um, a friend who was vegan and gluten-free and lived in Paris. Can you imagine like how challenging that would be? And so, you know what, but she did it and she had a very popular blog all about it. So it's possible. And so, you know, sometimes it's just kind of looking at what is it that it is being triggered in us whenever we have friends talking about this sort of thing. Um, again, you know, that is a, uh, a, you know, really personal thing, but thank you for reaching out and asking about it. And I hope that my answer has been helpful. The last thing I wanted to muse on before I close and go get ready for a day of clients is what's changed since the 400th episode. All right, so the 400th episode, Gizzy is snoring away. So the 400th episode was in July of 2017. And for those of you who have been following Tranquility to Shore for a while, you may know that that time was a really critical time for me. And the fact that, now of course I couldn't reveal this on the 400th because this was all kind of privately happening, which is, you know, hard. And um, it was the selling of my studio, my baby, Tranquil Space. That's crazy. It turns 20 years old this year. But at that point, it was 18. And I, I sold it actually the following month. And so, you know, there was a lot that was happening for me, a lot of unknowns, a lot of discomfort, you know, um, really a lot of internal struggles that was all private. And so, you know, as I think about that and what has shifted since then, like, oh my goodness, so much. Okay, so I sold the studio. I sold my freaking baby of 18 years that was like my identity, my um, pride and joy, and also had come to be my biggest challenge emotionally, physically, mentally, etc. So, so that has happened. Um, I created Your Tranquility, which was this online course I put out last year. And I cannot thank you enough, those of you who participated and supported throughout 2018. Oh my gosh, you were an entire delight to work with. And um, thank you for supporting that. And then I turned it into my sixth book, Year of Tranquility, A Lifestyle Planner. I have much fewer emails. 
You know, for years, I was, of course, copied on so many things studio related, tranquil space related, and now I'm not. And so there's a lot less emergencies. There's a lot less clogged toilets or sinks or bulbs out or plants not watered or people needing subs, you know, all the stuff that comes along with running a yoga studio. So that I have to say has been really nice. My inbox is a lot lighter. Another thing that has shifted and has been hard is releasing control. Okay, so I had a way of doing things at the studio, or I should say I had a way I wanted things done at the studio. I had checklists, I had, you know, systems, meaning like, plants were to be watered, tea and cookies were to always be out, and during the winter, the fireplace was to be on, you know, all these sorts of things that were little touches. And after I sold the studio and walk in, and those were not happening, you know, that was a big thing for me to let go of. And I and I stopped teaching there last July. So I taught for a year after I sold, and then I stopped teaching. And, you know, it just... um got to be where it just, it feels, it feels good to go in because I, so many familiar faces and people I've loved for so many years. And yet it also feels really awkward and weird to go in. So I'm in that awkward, weird phase. So I'm not going as much. And so that's been, um, you know, a big shift because of course this was a massive part of my life. It's something I built, uh, from scratch in my living room and, you know, to have it kind of have faded over the past couple of years. Um, but in great hands with yoga works, I will say, you know, that it's like, that's been tricky. You know, I will say another thing that was hard is, um, after selling the studio and going in and, you know, they've got a big kind of like, um, a national kind of boutique buyer and whatnot and coming in and seeing like products that I had created. And really, you know, without being too grandiose, were really my life's work, you know, so to speak, um, in the sale bin, like that was a bit crushing. And that was that's been a hard adjustment. And and I get it, you know, I really, although I intellectually understand it, just emotionally, that was that was tough. Then, of course, shifts in relationships, you know, that were a big part of my life for 15 plus years. You know, people I used to communicate with all the time or run into all the time that I just don't anymore. And so that, of course, has been an adjustment. And, you know, it's like um, I still, of course, uh, wish, you know, everyone well. My, my biggest thing with selling the studio was that the community stayed intact. And, you know, cause I think we do have a really special community. And so that's just been one of the pieces that has been an adjustment, right? Of just the, the shifts within relationships when you're no longer kind of the person who needs to be in contact with people regularly. And then, you know, I'd say to kind of change an identity because for years when people are like, what, what do you do? I never really had an answer. I'm like, well, I, you know, run a yoga studio or, um, own a yoga studio or I teach yoga. And, you know, now just it's been, been a big shift in my identity, which, you know, is fine. It's so nice to be able to actually have something I do. Uh, that people understand, like, okay, I'm a psychotherapist, right? Um, Because I remember even back in the days when I had to describe what a podcast was to people, you know, so I'd never be like, oh, I'm a podcaster, because people didn't know what that meant. Now, of course, they do. But, you know, just this identity, kind of going back to Julie asking, you know, about how, how juggling these different hats. But whenever you have a hat that has been so part of who you are and so rooted in all of that, that is removed, you know, it's, um, it's, it's challenging. And, you know, there's no, nobody at fault for this at all. I mean, it's, um, just one of those things that as we grow and evolve like a snake that shed its skin or, you know, a tree that loses its bark, it's like we're leaving that part of ourselves behind. It doesn't mean it's not still within us or part of us, but it's no longer, you know, the main coverage of who we are. And that I think is, um, you know, that takes some time to adjust to. And the book that I found to be super duper helpful during that whole process was Transitions by William Bridges. And it's called Making Sense of life's changes. And you too, if you're dealing with any sort of transition, you may find that book to be super duper helpful, particularly as we think about our identities and the way it's tied up and what we do or who we're associated with, you know, or 
kind of whatever it might be for you. So that has been kind of what my shifts have been since July of 2017, the 400th milestone episode. I mean, definitely too, focusing a lot on building um, private practice and the fact that I have my own office now that I've had for almost a year, not quite, but that's really a super duper sacred space for me. Plants are always watered, I will note. And um, also, you know, the creation of new events like and offerings like the Tranquility Salon, which is a four week offering that I do. And I'll have another one coming up in the fall. And then, of course, this TDJ soiree. You know, I haven't done something like this ever, I think, for uh, that Tranquility Du Jour experience focused. But I um, have not done a day long in probably a decade. Like, I can't remember the last time I did one that, you know, was probably, oh, oh, seven, eight or nine. So, you know, so I'm really excited about kind of these new these new uh, creative projects and aspirations and what have you. And yet, you know, it's, um, I'm still me. I'm still who I was when I started the studio in my living room in 1999. And yet I've also kind of evolved and grown and that's okay. And that's good. And it's also not necessarily easy. (laughs) So that is the, um, you know, last 50 podcasts in a nutshell of like what's transpired during that time. Now, in closing, I just want to, you know, say that I'll have a link to a few of these things that I mentioned in the show notes, which is KimberlyWilson.com slash 450. And also, um, there's a link to Year of Tranquility, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So even this week, I did a little Facebook video and an Instagram live. So dabbling a bit more with videos and more of that to come. And, you know, as always, I just want to say thank you to you guys for all of your support, for supporting Tranquility, the locally sewn eco-friendly clothing line that's been around since 02, you know, to supporting TDJ Soiree. We've sold half the tickets and I, I cannot wait to play with you guys on June 9th. Like, I'm so excited. And then also, you know, for really listening, tuning into this podcast, some of you for years, some of you are brand new, a big welcome. And then also for reading the blog and the love notes. And, you know, if there's any way that I can support you deeper or better or further, please don't hesitate to reach out because, again, we're all works in progress. We're all growing. We're all evolving. And my hope is that this is a community that serves you along that path. I wish you a great, great rest of your week. And thank you, as always, for tuning in. Namaste. Thank you.